Last week, I did my top five most brutal shooters on the Mega Drive, but there were a couple really good ones that I couldn't quite get to. So I wanted to do a follow-up mini video and showcase these two games and see if either one can displace any of my top five from last week. And I can tell you right now that one of them was so brutally frustrating that not only did it displace a game from last week, I had to mark it not safe for work. So let's check out these two games and see which one kicked my ass the most and earned its way into the top five most brutal. And I'll start off with the game that many people have been asking for because it's also an extremely cool shooter with great graphics, fantastic music, and creative levels. It also has a reputation for being extremely difficult. And that game is Gaiaris. And Gaiaris is number one. Yes, it's pronounced Gaiaris, cause Jamie Bunkers says so. But mullets aside, this is one cool and unique game. It kicks off with several minutes of cutscenes, very uncommon on cartridges at the time. Gaiaris plays fast with three adjustable ship speeds, and its claim to fame is a unique weapon stealing mechanic. Your satellite can be shot out onto almost any enemy, which is how you power up your weapon. Different enemies give you different weapons, and you have to steal from them multiple times to power it up completely. My favorite weapon to steal is on these robot octopi on level 2, giving you the G-Beam. Power it up a few times here and keep it. You'll have two giant beams of destruction, as long as you can manage to stay alive. As cool as the weapon stealing is, once I power up with this one, I pretty much hoard it for the rest of the game. Another cool feature are the branching paths, so you can replay the levels and try areas you haven't the first time through. The recurring theme of the bosses here are giant warrior maidens, and this level 2 boss is the first real test. After several good blasts of your G-Beam into this giant clam, it opens up into a siren. Read into that bit of imagery as you see fit. The standard enemies and mid-bosses are very reminiscent of Gradius, and you'll think, shoot the core, on multiple occasions as you come across them. Apparently, Konami was pretty generous at the time, and didn't go after every developer aping their ideas. Gaiaris is also unique in that the enemy placement is not always the same, so you can't simply memorize where each wave will come from. They're actually based on your current location at that moment, so it changes things up and makes the incoming waves more interesting and not just a memory fest. The same can't be said for environmental hazards though, like these incoming spikes and falling blocks, which will definitely screw you up the first time you come across them. And like most games of this era, dying means getting kicked back to a checkpoint. And when I say back, I mean way back. If you die on a boss, the last checkpoint is often well back into earlier in the level, so you'll need to fight through it again. The checkpoints in this game are punishing. The solution? Try not to die. But the effort is worth it, as the game is fantastic to play with some really cool set pieces. My favorite moment that never gets old is flying past these singularities as they try to suck you in and you fight to pull away from the gravity. Everything starts getting pulled in different directions and shot back and forth from the competing gravity of the wormholes, and it's one of the coolest things I've seen in a shooter. Awesome moments like these are why I miss these shooters from the 90s. At some point it became exclusively about score and difficult enemies and patterns, but they lost that magic of the experience. You were playing through something epic, as opposed to just a technical exercise with cool graphics as window dressing. And it's why these older style shoot 'em ups will always be a nostalgic favorite for me. After a few levels in, I was starting to wonder when this game is supposed to hit that renowned difficulty that I keep hearing about. It's certainly not easy, the same ballpark as Eliminate Down may be a bit less so. Another awesome game I played through in the last video, level after level of really cool gameplay and scenarios, 
but nothing that hit me over the head and kicked my ass. This shielded warrior though was a huge pain in my ass as it just takes a ton of patience, biding your time and a good while to finally take her down. What can I say? I'm an antsy crack addict and this chick is ruining my high. The worst part was the final gauntlet of bosses here. Not that a boss rush is unusual, but it just takes a while to work through them all and ruins the pacing of what was otherwise good up to that point, as the bosses are kind of a slow burn here. Oh god, not you again! Mother of all creatures big and small, will you just die already? Alright, finally, a cool new boss to fight through. Not too tough though, once you get how to avoid the snatching claw here. The final boss maiden is a bit of a pushover and goes down without much effort, and you're treated to another long set of anime sequences, just like in the intro. And hey, after putting up with that shield-wielding Amazon, maybe it was all worth the effort after all. Oh, Dan. So does Gyarus knock any of the other games out of their top spot? As a better game, certainly, as I had a great time with it, but on sheer brutality, I'd have to say no. Personally, I'd put Eliminate Down as either equivalent or a good bit harder, in my opinion, than Gyarus was. In fact, as long as we're on that topic, I also wanted to bring up Truxton, as that game is absolutely one of the hardest games on the Mega Drive. And the only reason I didn't include it last week is because I already did the game for the PC Engine. And that brings me to my next game, a vertical shooter, and whoa, mama was this game a pain in the ass. And I've played and beaten this one before on the PC Engine called Kyukoku Tiger, a straightforward, no BS, no frills shoot fest with excellent tunes and fun gameplay. Called Twin Cobra in the US, I'd read over and over again about how incredibly difficult the Mega Drive version was, even more so than the arcade. But I was still skeptical. I mean, it's the same game. How much more so could it be? Well, if you're watching this next segment with the kiddos around, I'd wait till they're off to bed, because this game will bring out the beast in anyone. So pucker up, Buttercup, while we go for a ride on the Oh Shit Express. Twin Cobra is the ass kicker of ass kickers. On the Mega Drive, they implemented an evil AI that doesn't fire bullets at you. No, it predicts where you're going to be and fires them there instead. The game doesn't look or seem too tough at first, but you'll learn real quick to fear every single enemy in this game, from the lowly tank to the large copters, planes, and ships that you need to take down. It's as if the bullets are already on their way to your destination before you even get there. I think they kidnapped Gary Kasparov, the famous chess player, and downloaded his worst moves into the code for the game. I can see him just sitting there staring at me, ready to stick a big middle finger up my ass with the next round of enemies. For that reason, this game is full of close calls where you're often changing direction at the very last moment to avoid incoming death. Twin Cobra will have you reaching for that butt paste, but not for your thumb. I hope your sphincter is ready for a workout, because you'll be puckering that butthole like you're stuck in traffic with a mad case of the shits. No, 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 no. But the biggest middle fingers are the bosses. Save up your bombs for these bad boys and unload on them at the end of each level, because they've got armor to spare and a can of whoop ass to unload. You'll know they're coming because the game will do a slight pause to load up, almost to tell you to pucker up for what's incoming. They're usually well-armored tanks and spew bullets at a rate much faster than you can move, along with the same obnoxious bullet AI. Consistently dodging them takes a fair bit of luck, and if you die, it's back to a checkpoint. But once you get the hang of the levels and save your bombs for the bosses, you can bomb your way to victory. And I was making decent progress. Then, this happens. 
I'll just stop right here and let you know that this is where you can stop playing the game. Seriously, you'll thank me later. Really, you don't want me to keep going. Alright, I was going to spare you, but may as well get this over with. Bomb your way to victory. So I unload, and unload, and unload, and unload, and unload. Okay, I've unloaded five bombs and these assholes are unfazed. Are you serious? My last two gotta do something. Still, nothing. Am I doing this wrong? No way I can keep dodging these guys. I'm toast. So now I don't have nearly as many bombs saved up, have to get back to these guys and figure out how in the hell I'm going to kill them with my standard weapon. After unloading the few bombs I have left, I cower in the corner like a wuss, praying that I can somehow avoid the amazing bullet AI until they die. Seriously. They need to mine that code, because this is Skynet level shit that will take over the world if it ever gets out. You'll be cowering in this corner wondering when in the hell these assholes will start to break. Seriously, fighting these guys feels like having your nutsack raked over a cheese grater. And if you don't have a pair, consider yourself lucky. Wait, what's this? That's right, if I just last long enough, it will bypass them and I don't have to kill them. Sayonara, suckers! Woo! Well played, Gasparov. Well played. These pricks are as bent as the Soviet sickle and as hard as the hammer that crosses it. Oh, and now this prick finally dies on my way out. Thanks for nothing. I don't know how many bombs you need to actually kill these guys, but I can tell you that seven wasn't enough. This boss is a huge pain in the ass and will probably make you want to quit. The next level is the toughest yet where it throws enemies at you like its blast processing reputation depends on it. Ships and planes in multiples shower the screen. It's a beast of a level and of course, I have no bombs cause somebody ate them all up. A boss rush? Are you kidding me? I ain't got enough bombs for that shit. If I gotta fight those tanks again one more time, I'm done. It's over, the game is getting shut off. At least this boss here isn't too bad at all. At least compared to those last torture tanks. Finally, the last level, final boss coming up. And it's no cakewalk, but the pattern is simple enough and the few bombs I picked up are enough to take it out. <sighs> so if you can get past those nightmare tanks, I think you're home free. And when it's all over, the caption reads, you made it through successfully. You are now worthy of being called the final tiger. Damn straight final tiger, <laughs> motherfucker. After all that shit, I'll take it. And I ain't doing no second loot. It was fun while it lasted, but I'm not coming back for a rematch. So if you're looking to get your ass kicked, Twin Cobra is the game for you. Just make sure to have your jar of butt paste handy. My very own Shmup Junkies Thumb Chum. Operators are standing by. So aside from the maddening bullet AI, how does it compare to the PC Engine version? That's going to make for a fun head-to-head -head that I'm already working on, so stay tuned for that. But I can definitely tell you that it was tougher, about as tough as anything that I've played on the Mega Drive. Take your pick on which of the top five it can displace. Aside from Grindstormer, it is the hardest that I've played on the Mega Drive so far. If you enjoyed this video short and haven't seen my original top five hardest on the Mega Drive, you can check it out right here, along with my top five for the Sega Saturn as well. Awesomely fun video. And stay tuned because I've got another killer console in the pipeline for my next video, for my torture and your amusement. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, Gaiaris is number one.